Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today is the first video of 2023 and I'm excited. I'm going to be sharing some secrets with you. I'm going to show you some awesome projects that you can make using wood. Now don't be scared because the best part, I'm going to show you how to navigate the hardware store, where to look for the wood, what kind of wood you can get, the best prices for the wood, how to get it cut if you don't have power tools, and then show you some fun projects. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Let's head into the hardware store. I like to go in and just straight to the point in the lumber section. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks here in the hardware along with a, some pictures of some projects I've made of wood from the hardware store and then we'll dive into our projects. So of course, when you go to the hardware store, tons of options, many different price points, many different qualities of wood. So there's something for everyone's budget. It's just up to you. Now, one thing I like to do in the hardware store when I'm ready to make a nice wooden sign is come to these pre-cut boards they have a variety of materials from underlayment to plywood to MDF to birch. I mean, all kinds of, they've even got pegboard if you wanted to make some type of pegboard display. So I like to use these as a base for a sign. They're really great for larger signs, but you can also cut them down and get several signs out of that as well. They also have pre-cut shapes like hexagons and circles and rectangles. So there's definitely a lot of blanks there that you can pick up for a pretty reasonable price to make that sign. Now for the frame on the sign, you can pick up a pack of wood like these right here. I use these often to use as my frame for my signs, but don't forget to visit the trim section at the hardware store, especially if you want something a little more decorative. Maybe you want to make a Christmas sign and have a little more decoration on your frame. So definitely check out the trim section to attach that to your wood board. Now, speaking of signs, here are a couple that I've made. Now this is probably my favorite aisle in the wood department. This wood is a little bit more on the pricier point, but you are getting a much better quality wood. So I often pick up a lot of wood from this section for my projects. One thing I love to pick up are the wood rounds that they have there. They have a variety of sizes. They didn't have the size I normally get, but they did have the large circles. And I love to make lazy Susans out of this and use that as my go-to for a wedding gift or even a housewarming gift. Especially fun to make some for all the different seasons so that you can display it all year long. Gonna lay here on the grass. And don't forget the dowel rods from circular dowel rods to square rectangular dowel rods. Lots of options here to make wall hangings, to make lanterns. That's what I did with some of these square ones. I made myself a set of lanterns. Another piece of wood that is great for projects is going to be a two by eight, two by 10, two by six, and that's to use that to make shelves. Home Depot has tons of brackets you can choose from, or you can order them online, but this is an easy project that you could make several different times and use it throughout your home. I am finally home at last. sometimes the most cost effective way for me to do a project is just to buy an entire sheet of wood. Now I don't want to try to lug that home in my car and deal with cutting it in my workshop. So I let the guys at Home Depot handle that for me. They can rip boards down. So if you give them the big sheet and say, I need just six inch boards all the way across, they can rip those down with the tools that they have there. They can also trim the molding there so you can get the wood cut there. Don't let that deter you from buying a big sheet of wood, especially if it's more cost effective for you to do a project. My last tip and suggestion when doing wood projects is you've got to check the pieces of wood, each individual piece. You want to make sure that it doesn't have a bow, which is also known as camber. This one has a bow. You can see it. And you want to make sure that it's not twisted. You've got to flip it on all four sides and make sure it's good to go. Now I wanted to show you the biggest project I've ever made using wood from the hardware store. 
And that is my farm table. This is a 12 foot by five foot farm table that my husband and I built all from lumber from the hardware store. So if you dream it up, you can definitely do it. Don't let nerves or a lack of tools deter you from making something that you really want to make. Now let's get into some fun projects. Let's dive into these lanterns, what you're going to need. So for the first lantern, you're going to need a piece of two by 12. This will be the base cut into a square. You'll need four of these square balusters. I just left mine the length they were, but you can trim these down depending on the height of the lantern you want. For the top, you need another piece of two by 12 cut down to a square, a piece of two by 10 cut down to a square, and one of these wooden toppers. That's our first lantern. Now for the second lantern, the base is the same. It's another two by 12 cut into a square. Here I am using some spindles that I will trim down just a little bit by taking a little bit off the top and the bottom. And then the top is another piece of two by 12, two by 10, and another wooden topper. So those are all the pieces we need to get the these lanterns put together. The first step is to take the 2 by 12 base and you want to attach your balusters and then your spindles. So to do that, I marked off where I wanted it to go just to make sure I got it in the right spot. You could put a little wood glue on the bottom of this and attach it, but I'm gonna use a brad nailer going in from the bottom to get mine attached. You could use a screw and countersink it, just meaning that you can get that screw in there and have it flush, or you could just use a hammer and nails. For the top of the lantern, take that piece of two by 10. You wanna make sure you drill a hole in there. We're just using our drill press, but you can use a hand drill so that your top can easily screw into it. I'm using a little bit of wood glue on the bottom of my 2x10, setting it on top of that 2x12, and then to make sure it's really on there good, just going in again with my brad nailer and nailing in some nails. Not necessary, I don't think, but if you'd like to, just use some hammer and nails. You could use a screw and then fill it in. Once it's all assembled, you're ready to stain it or paint it. I'm using some vintage teal spray paint by Rust-Oleum, and I'm gonna give it a couple of good coats of this. If this is going outside, you definitely want to seal it, but if you're putting it inside, don't worry about it. Then from there, you wanna take a hook and you wanna screw that in to the bottom side of the top of your lantern. Once that hook is in there, you are ready to take these outside and grab some plants and hang them on those hooks. These are great for displaying your favorite plants. You could use them on your front porch. You could use them on your patio, or you could even use them inside next to your fireplace. And again, the height is customizable. It's totally up to you. For this project, we are making a bench. You'll want to grab a 2 by 12 and cut it to whatever length you'd like. I have mine cut down to 4 feet. We're going to start by sanding and I'm going to start with the 80 grit sandpaper. I want to make sure, especially when I do furniture projects, that I am hitting all the different grades of sandpaper, meaning coarse, medium, and fine. So my coarse sandpaper is the 80 grit. This board wasn't super rough. That's why I didn't use a 60 or something lower, but I started with this 80 and I like to use this one to help take off the sharp edges of my board so I run it along the edges of the boards on the corners to soften it especially if you have children or grandchildren and you don't want them bumping into a sharp corner you want to kind of soften those just a little bit and this is a great grit to do that once you have gone through with a grit of sandpaper and sanded it all over you want to wipe it down really good before you move to the next one. So the next grit that I used was a 120. I sanded it all over. I'm just using, this is an orbital sander by Bosch that I have, absolutely love it. Craftsman is another brand of tools that I have a ton of and I just love their products. And I did the same thing. I sanded it all down, I wiped it off, and then I moved to the 220, gave it another good sanding and wiped it off. All I know, all I know, all I know. 
Now it's time to make your design decision. Do you want to leave it natural? Do you want to paint it or do you want to stain it? So for me, I am using some dark walnut stain by Minwax and I am brushing it all over the board, making sure to get the top, the bottom, the sides. You can mix and match stains. Some people like to stack and layer the stains. It's totally up to you. But again, you could leave it natural. You could use just some wood oil and get a nice natural finish that way. Or you could even spray paint it or paint it however you like. Once you have got all of this stain on there, you need to make sure that you let it dry really, really well. Once your board is nice and dry, you are ready to seal it. Now I wanted this to kind of continue with that rustic vibe. I didn't want it to have a super bright sheen. So I am just using a matte polyurethane that I'm going to brush on there. And the little tip here about sealer is you definitely want to put on several coats to make sure it gets full protection. So I'm going to brush on one coat of the sealer, let it dry really, really well, then go in with a 220 grit sandpaper, give it a very light sanding, wipe it down and do a second coat. Again, let that dry really well. Then go in with your sandpaper again, give it a sanding, wipe it down. And then one more time for fun here, going on three times, you want to go in with that sealer, make sure you let it dry, hit it with that sandpaper and wipe it down really well. The last step is to assemble your legs. I picked up these hairpin legs from Amazon. You can pick them up from wherever you would like. You certainly could use pieces of wood as the legs if you'd like. And I just grabbed some wood screws. Originally, the screws that came with it, I was ha gonna have to drill pilot holes with it, meaning I was gonna have to drill a little hole before I could actually screw my screw in there. And I just decided because this is a decorative bench, it's not gonna be sat on. I went ahead and just grabbed some wood screws that I had in my workshop and I got Got all of the legs attached and then I was ready to put it somewhere in my house and get it styled. For the next two projects, we'll be making some signs. Now I'll be using a two by eight for both of these signs. And if you didn't know, a two by eight, as well as all pieces of wood don't actually measure by that measurement. So a two by eight actually measures at one and a half by seven and a quarter inches. So this first board here, this sign is gonna be seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. My second one was cut down to seven and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. sanded both of my boards down with 220 grit sandpaper because I was using a better quality wood. I wiped them down really good and then I stained them again with that dark walnut Minwax stain. Ooh. 
while the two boards were drying for the sign, I went inside and used my Cricut. It's a cutting machine that you can use to cut vinyl, fabric, all kinds of things. And I had it cut out two decals that I designed to put on my sign. Once they were cut out, I needed to kind of weed away all the extra vinyl. Now, if you don't have a cutting machine, you still can make these signs using stickers or even stencils or even freehand with some paint markers. So definitely can get it done even if you don't have the tool. Once the stickers were ready to go, I was ready to apply to my first one. Now this one is going to be for all those pet lovers out there. There's two variations you could do of this. Of course, I have dogs. So mine says because dogs. But if you know somebody who has cats, or perhaps you do, you could put cats at the bottom. So I applied my vinyl decal to my board and made sure that it was nice and secure. This is in the world I've been to. This is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way. Once the decal is all attached, but again, if you use stickers, if you used stencils, up to you. Once that's ready, you want to go ahead and attach the hanger on the back. Several options here. You could use some type of hardware like a sawtooth hanger or whatever type of hanger you have. I have a whole collection here that I've just saved from different projects. You could also just take some twine and attach that to the back with the staple gun. So lots of ways, just depends on the look, or maybe you just want to prop this up on a counter somewhere. That would work as well. Once you get the back all attached and it's secure, you want to flip it over and now you need to take a hook and you need to screw that in to the board. So you don't really need to pre-drill a hole for this because the wood is a little soft and you just want to screw that uh, hook into the piece of wood and then take your lint roller. This is just a mini travel lint roller that I picked up from Target and hang that on there. Now, if you made a larger board, you could put a full size lint roller on there. I actually have a couple variations of this sign. So I'll show you those, but this is such a great gift for anybody maybe who's getting a new puppy or a new kitten, or perhaps you just need it in your home to control all that dog hair. No, I don't care cause I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Mm -hmm. Cause I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. And here is that second sign again. Remember, this is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter is the measurements. I cut out a decal for this one as well. Like I mentioned, I'm going to get that all attached to this. But again, don't forget stickers. You can find those at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, anywhere. If you do use stickers, I would recommend that you seal over them with some Mod Podge just to make sure that it stays on there. But I mean, you could do scrapbook paper, lots of options. Dollar Tree has scrapbook paper letters that you can get so just look at the different stores again if you don't have a cutting machine you don't have to have that to make this project so once my decal was all attached you want to grab a clothespin now there's several different sizes of clothespins I would say that what I have in my stash is the teeny tiny little clothespins a medium size and then just your standard size so the one I'm using is the medium size and I would recommend two different ways to attach this because you're going to be placing cards on this and you're going to be using that clothespin quite a bit. You want to make sure that it's sturdy. So I would not recommend using hot glue on this. I would recommend using wood glue or if you have a strong glue adhesive like super glue, gorilla glue, I'm just using a strong adhesive by Starbond, same difference, and a get that clothespin attached. I am on my way. I won't slow down. Now for the cards to attach, 
I am using, again, using my Cricut because it will do the writing for me. It will cut the cards out. The cards, I had them cut to the measurement of three and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that is the size of the cards that I will be clipping each week when I change these out. But it's up to you. Again, if you don't have a Cricut, get some, you can use fancy scissors. You could just use index cards just as easily. They make colorful index cards you can grab and you can handwrite all the verses that you'd like. Once that's done, this is finished. You are ready to display this in your home or perhaps gift it to someone you care about. I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way and I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care cause I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't. Now for this project, we're making a cute planter. You're going to need some more wood. You'll need four one by fours cut to 36 inches long, a one by six cut to 14 inches long, two one by fours cut to six inches long, and a piece of two inch trim cut to 14 inches. You'll need five pieces of that. So to get this assembled, start by pushing those four boards together. You want to take a trim piece and put it towards the top. I put it about two inches down from the top, but this is just personal preference wherever you would like it. That one by six is going to go on the bottom of the planter. And then those two one by fours are going to be the sides of the planter. And the last bit of your trim pieces will be what is the front of your planter. Once you've got all the pieces kind of laid out and you know where they need to go, get them attached. You can use a combination of wood glue and a brad nailer up to you. You could use screws, lots of options of how to get it assembled, but I just went with the wood glue and brad nailer option. Once my pieces were all put together, I decided I really like the natural look. So I'm just going to go in with some urethane. This is a semi gloss and use that same process of paint a coat, give it a light or wipe it off. I'm sorry, paint a coat, give it a light sanding, wipe it off, paint a coat, you know, etc. Then you want to put a little bit of a liner. The key here is you want to make sure that you also have drilled a few holes in the bottom of the planter so that it can drain a little bit. And again, if you want to put a liner in there, I would recommend that. And then you're ready to put whatever flowers or succulents that you would like to inside of the planter. Once you've got whatever greenery or um, flowers you would like inside the planter, the last step is to add some numbers to the front representing your address. Home Depot or any hardware store has a variety of different numbers that you can pick up. I just drilled these straight onto the wood and then this was attached to the brick using some masonry screws, making sure that they were okay for brick. And that's it. You've got a really cute planner. This would be a great housewarming gift for someone perhaps who was moving into a new home. That wraps up today's video. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite. Also, let me know what's a wood DIY that you have made or that you would like to make. Drop it down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.